Next for today's perspective, our next guests are two renowned anthropologists who spent five years documenting the lives of migrants in one specific place, those passing through the Italian-French border and those at least attempting to. They look at how they live, what support they received and their dealings with the authorities, the police, and drawing from it wider lessons of how the migration issue is being dealt with. Let's bring in Dr Dizier Fasson and Anne-Claire Defosse, who have released the book of your work with you at the moment, uh, L'Exile or Exile, released uh, here in France. Can you start, start off, Anne-Claire, by explaining how you immersed yourselves within the community uh, and how you carried out your work? It is important for us to uh, be able to understand and meet with all the protagonists on this border. So uh, the people who are crossing the border, the migrants, of course, but also the people who are helping them, uh, calling themselves uh, solidaires, and the uh, public, uh, the, the, the police and, and gendarmes who were trying to control this border. So. Uh, we thought that being involved in uh, everyday activities in the shelter uh, organized by the, um, by the volunteers would help us to understand better from inside what was going on. So it helped us to meet with exiles in different times and, and, and days and also uh, with um, the volunteers themselves. It was, of course, more difficult to uh, have the same contacts with the police but we tried it, and uh, in fact, the encounters were more when uh, going into the mountain, rescuing people. You had sometimes in encounters with the police, and so it's an other, other type of encounter. And beside that, of course, we had a lot of interviews with all the protagonists we could meet. Let me pick you up on what you mean by that, other types of encounters. So basically what you're explaining is you're both, in basically, uh, as it were to the migrants arriving, I think I'm right in saying, Dr. Didier, you were working, uh, actually helping treat some of the injuries and wounded and the sick. And, you, uh, and Claire, you, you were helping those as so part of registering names and taking details. Yes. So you wouldn't have been necessarily seen as sociologists, anthropologists. You'd have been classed as part of the, the shelter community. So you mentioned the police treating you differently. What, what did you mean? In France, it's always more complicated to analyse the police. There's a kind of secret around it, uh, not, so not so much of transparency. So um, we had, of course, uh, interviews, official interviews, formal interviews with uh, police officers, but we also had more informal ones uh, on a different time and way. And that helped us to understand better maybe what was their real uh, work and how they felt about it. For instance, uh, of course, their mission, their first mission is to stop irregular migrants from crossing the border, which is which, something they do. But some of them are, let's say, um, uh, agree with this kind of, um, of, of mission. Others are more reluctant because they face women, children and, and men who have traveled miles and miles for sometimes years and uh, have lived traumatic experiences and just want to find a place where they can live in peace and raise their kids in peace. So they are not so comfortable with the fact to expel them after having suffered so much uh, before. And they expressed this to us when we met them in, let's say, more informal um, situations. And all of them, whether they, are, whether they agree with the mission they have or less agree with it, uh, feel that it's a completely inefficient mission because in, at the end of the day, everybody crosses the border. People who have traveled thousands of kilometers, they won't stop at the French-Italian border when they come from Africa or the Middle East. They will yeah. go on. As someone who's covered migration over the years, whether it's the border with Syria into Turkey, or Calais to the UK, or from you know, Greece, Turkey, many... There's an old adage in journalism, which is you try and narrow the gap between yourself and the story. And you've done that more so, spending five years there. Didier, tell me about your perceptions arriving and, and how that changed in the time that you spent there. <clears throat> so we started with the idea of studying this border, as Antleo was saying, uh, uh, and the, the, the interactions between the three protagonists. And to answer uh, your previous question, one of the encounters with the police was being arrested by them, oh. uh, ourselves. Uh, and, for what? And that, uh, for simply for helping uh, um, uh, exiled migrants in the in the mountain, uh, and especially when they were uh, in in the snow, in the cold, and uh, 
and helping them uh, to, uh, uh, to, 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 to avoid the dangers of, of the mountain and, and then bringing them uh, to, in the valley, uh, to, uh, uh, which, which is completely legal and not only legal, but protected by the principle of fraternity that, uh, that, that is constitutional in, in, in France. Um, uh, but, but as we, um, uh, as we develop the, 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 the research, we, um, uh, we, we, we understood that uh, working at, in that place was an opening on what had happened before. So the reasons why uh, these people, victims of persecution, violence, uh, extreme poverty, uh, had to leave their country, but also uh, the complication they had all along uh, their uh, journey. This complication being not simply uh, something that happened locally, but also uh, in relation, as you know, uh, with, uh, the, uh, uh, with the policies of the European Union, the externalization of borders on the other side of the Mediterranean. So it can be Turkey on one side uh, and uh, on the other side, uh, the um, uh, Algeria, Morocco, uh, Tunisia and Niger. And this has consequences for people uh, which are uh, extremely dire. What do you think your work does by looking at this for five years, you decided to, the summers and the winters, that perhaps journalism doesn't do, that books can't do. I mean, I'm interesting because if you look at the UK at the moment, there's a big scandal over the post office and about workers and a, a faulty system, people being wrongly accused. It was a TV drama mm. that made the difference, getting people's attention. And I wonder if it's something that you can actually look beyond, you know, three minute pieces of, of, of journalism or TV reports by the time you're spending there. Well, we, uh, <clears throat> we think, and that's the, the reason why we write the way we do, that is giving narratives, telling stories, uh, and bringing the analysis through the stories. Uh, we think that it is important as social scientists to uh, make people understand, as we do, uh, the, the world as it is, uh, in opposition to, uh, to the, uh, uh, the, the, the way the public debates, the uh, public, uh, the, the political uh, 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 decision makers are presenting it with the ideological background. We we try to to show uh, in the simplest way uh, or the clearest way uh, what what are the uh, what is the situation uh, concretely and <clears throat> and uh, the and books like uh, ours we hope. Uh, can uh, can play a role in uh, this uh, this understanding of of the uh, comprehension of the situation. It's a it's a really big undertaking. Uh, is there, what should viewers to France 24 take away before reading this that might interest them to say actually this is something that, that's notable to you over that five year journey? Well, as Didier said, stay to the facts and don't be disturbed by uh, discourses. Uh, there is no invasion of migrants in Europe or in France. Uh, just a few of those who are traveling all around the world are arriving here. And the reasons why people come here are not because the country like France are so attractive or because they want to take something from the country, but because they had to flee their own country because yeah. of war, poverty, discrimination and so on. Really nice talking to you, and it looks a fantastic read, and well worth the time that you spend. It's something completely different. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank Dr. You. Didier Fassin and Claire Defossé. The book, L'Exil, Toujours Recommence, is available in France.